Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the last session here at uh, GPD on day one. Um, my presentation today is going to be um, in the use of TSSA in a novel method uh, to potentially cold bend glass. So a, a quick tutorial on TSSA is it stands for Transparent Structural Silicone Adhesive. The material comes, it's an adhesive that comes in sheets. It can be cut to fit. It's used to adhere uh, fittings on the inside interior of a glass that can be incorporated to uh, uh, point fixed type systems to create a, a very open, uh, visually stunning facade. You get an idea of, of the attachment of the puck um, and the fittings and then a finished facade here in this first slide. The application of the material is pretty straightforward. Um, it comes again in sheets. Um, it can be cut to fit to any size fitting that you would like. Um, it's a heat addition cure. So the preferred method for the application is to use an autoclave. So the autoclave um, cures the material and, and that uh, takes, takes about 30 minutes at 135 degrees C. So that's the heat portion of the autoclave. And then the pressure, pressure portion of the autoclave helps ensure that no air is trapped in between the layers of the film, the fitting, and the glass. There are several advantages to TSSA. Um, you can use tempered glass. It's, or, I'm sorry, the use of tempered glass is not mandatory, so that eliminates the potential perhaps for some roller wave. Um, the TSSA attachment can be designed um, to be applied closer to the edge of glass, so it opens up the vision, vision size of the, of the, of the glazing attachment. Um, the attachments, there's no drilling through this, so if it's an IG unit, it's not going to disrupt the interior cavity of the IG. Um, the fittings don't have to be circular, they can be square, they can be stars, they can be you know, things that are imprinted with, with logos if you would like to do that. Um, and TSSA is a unique, it, it is a structural adhesive, a silicone adhesive, um, but it's 10 times the, uh, the uh, strength of a conventional um, uh, wet applied sealant. So it's got quite a bit of strength, which um, is one of the reasons why it can be used in smaller uh, dimensions for these applications uh, comparatively. So there, there has been a, a quite a bit of information written not only on the performance of uh, TSSA, but the application. Um, and, and this is just a historical perspective. I mean, there's been a lot of diligence done here to, uh, to ensure performance in things like blast performance, hurricane impact, um, studies in uh, uh, behavior uh, with uh, century glass for creep rupture and things like that. So if you have time or are interested, these are a, a good um, a background in in the performance of, of TSSA. So we were asked uh, sometime last year by a designer, can we take and, and adhere um, metal angles to the side of a piece of glass that we can use to incorporate in a cable net wall system? So the idea is we glue metal to the side of the glass, then we incorporate that into the, uh, the uh, cable net via connection. And we answered, really don't know. We've never tried it before. So we you know, set about a, a set of experiments to try to understand if, if there was a potential to do this. The, the idea is, or the concern was, you know, at some point, is a length of metal attached to the glass going to become long enough? And the difference in, in co coefficient of thermal expansion between the glass and metal, is it going to create a shear profile in the TSSA and create some type of rupture process. So, you know, how long of a piece of metal can we um, can we attach using this this methodology? Um, we we set up the experiment using a uh, 900 by 1500 millimeter uh, piece of glass, and then we just glued different links here on the uh, the glass um, <clears throat> to uh, see if there was some type of threshold. And the pointer's not working, unfortunately. But these links were 150 millimeter, 300 millimeter, 610, and 1220. Um, the, uh, the sheets of TSSA come in a one millimeter thickness. You can apply sheet 
on top of sheet, on top of sheet if you would like, just to control some of the dimensional stability or, or shear in there. So we looked at a, a, a thickness of TSSA of one millimeter and two millimeter. Um, and then we sized the metal bars at around 25 millimeters wide. And we also looked at two different types of metal. One was aluminum and one was uh, stainless steel. So the idea of rupture is actually pretty evident in this. It's pretty well behaved with TSSA in the, in the idea that um, as you put a load onto this, whether it's torque or shear or tension, you're going to see a white pattern develop in the TSSA. And that white pattern is telling you that th the bonds are beginning to get close to rupture. So what uh, expectation was is that we were going to put this piece of glass in a, in a uh, heat laminator and then flip it over and, and start to look at the different links here to see if we could see the same pattern that's shown on the screen of some type of white, white uh, developing to indicate, OK, we've got a rupture process, so X length may not be appropriate for this type of, type of application. Um, so you know, we thought, OK, we're going to see something break here. We were kind of, I guess, mistaken. Actually, we weren't mistaken. It was a, it was a happy accident. What, what we found is, is that the TSSA actually didn't break. Um, the glass warped. So our next question is, well, can we use this actually to warp glass or cold bend glass where the, uh, the bending is actually taken up by the TSSA? And if you've seen my, uh, if you've seen my headshot here, this is what I look like after or before a haircut. So, so the next set of experiments was, OK, how can we control this? How predictable is it? And can we build a, a, a model or a design tool to, uh, to use this as a, as a potential method for cold bending? We looked at two different arrays. One was to put two pieces of metal parallel along each edge of glass. The second one was to take and put it perpendicu perpendicular to each other on the, on the glass. OK, so, and then, so the results of the experiment were that you know, the parallel warped in one direction. So it kind of cupped up. If I take a, a sheet of paper, it's going, it's going to bend like that, obviously. I mean, it makes sense geometrically. For the perpendicular, uh, sample, it actually formed like a paraboloid, so it, it kind of cupped up, right? Um, we found that in the testing that the aluminum warped greater than the steel, um, perhaps probably because of due to stiffness. And I apologize if the picture's not great, but I hope you can see, see somewhat of the curvature that's forming here in, in the glass, and, and the technician here is measuring some of the deflection that results after the TSSA was applied, heated in the laminator. And, um, um, and, and cured. This was, a, this was a measurement of the different warpage that we found um, dependent on the steel and the aluminum. You can see that uh, you know, the aluminum was quite a bit different there at the center of the long length of glass, four, four millimeters versus, versus nine millimeters. Um, the dimensions at the head and the sill are a little bit different, and some of that, I believe, was due to the fact that we pinned one side, so we kind of held it in place, not knowing if this was going to create a significant bend or a minimal bend, but it was in a heat laminator, and we just needed to control some of the aspect of it. The expectation would be is if you freed up the, 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 this process that you should see more uniform bending on the short side of that. And for the perpendicular array, um, it bent less than the, uh, the parallel. Um, and still, steel, again, was uh, created a, a bending or distortion uh, less, less than that of, of the aluminum. So that, the next step was, OK, can we take this information and develop an FE model and start to very different aspects of, of the of things that we're doing here to try to create some type of design methodology or calculation that could be utilized if somebody wanted to um, incorporate this into a design. And so we took and, uh, you know, straightforward 
material properties for glass, aluminum, um, and steel. And then we used a hyperelastic model, the Ogden model for TSSA. And we created these models and pretty good validation from the physical um, testing that we did to the, uh, the model that we had. So, you know, the model we can now use in a design of experiments to try to create this different set of information um, and develop this, uh, this math, hopefully a mathematical equation to, uh, to uh, enable design. And so our design of experiments, and this is going to be both for the perpendicular and parallel, we looked at different steel widths, so between 12.7 and 38.1 millimeters. We looked at different steel thicknesses, 3.175 3 to 9.525 millimeters. And then we looked at several different layers of TSSA between 2 and, two and 6 millimeters. And based on this, we were able to derive um, an equation. And, and it, uh, we used a, a solver to do this. And, and the, the variables that were most important here it, uh, for the perpendicular equation was the width of metal, <coughs> the thickness of metal, and then the thickness of the TSSA. And so now you can take this equation and um, you can set, you know, different, different, uh, you can vary different, you can vary different um, uh, variables here to try to solve either for the corner deflection or you can iterate it to look at, you know, what's, uh, what type of width of metal, things like that. So it's, you know, provides you a tool that uh, would, would enable the use of, of, this, uh, of this application. So again, repeated the, the design of experiments via the FE analysis in the parallel, same, same uh, materials, same variables. A little bit more simplistic equation. In, in, this, uh, <coughs> in this array that the, the primary variables were width of metal in millimeters and thickness of TSSA in millimeters. So, so the idea here now is, is that, you know, you've got TSSA which can take up the, the, the load associated to cold bending of the glass, right? Cold bending historically with wet glazing tends to transfer the stress of, of this bending process directly into the wet glazing. Now we have something that we can maybe perhaps isolate and incorporate into, you know, unique designs where you have an array of glass that may be cupped because you've perpendicularly oriented the metal or you create a, you know, a larger array with a nice, a nice bend in it. Um, you know, it, it may be a starter um, application for the bending. You want to bend it X amount so that you don't take the full load of the bending in, in the primary process. You bend it with TSSA and then you can bend it a little bit more to try to get a shape that you're doing, or if, if you wanted to incorporate this into a, like a conventional curtain wall where you want to bend or, or perhaps have like a, you know, a system where you pre-bend the glass, a, a flat piece of glass, and then have some type of locking device as you apply it to a curtain wall assembly um, to, uh, to take up that deformation and hopefully improve durability and, and less transfer of stress onto the wet glazing aspect. And with that, I'm, I'm to the end if there are any questions. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video, drop us a comment below, and share the video as well, since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click the bell icon. Ciao.